second here. My name is Patrice Volney. I live in I live in Montreal. I box in Toronto most of the time. Uh, I got 14 fights, uh, 14 wins, no losses. He's still undefeated, Patrice Vicious Volney. God bless for this. And now uh, boxing full lead backs for promotion. That's my first promoter, and uh, eventually I wish I would just stay like this. And uh, that's it. NBA champion, North American champion, WBO North American champion, and uh, we hope for more. I got a football family. My cousin used to play for uh, the Alouette. I got another cousin who was play uh, football the big league. My little cousin still play, and. Um, I was playing because uh, it's in the family, you know, so, and I actually did like it, but after my last year was in high school, I was supposed to go play in college and I said, I started boxing at this time, so I was playing football, boxing at the same time, and uh, I said, if you win the championship, I might try boxing, so we win, and uh, since I get in the gym, because they open a the gym not too far from my house, I was able to walk to the gym. And uh, I try it and uh, boom, drugs, right away, right away. After the first fight, I never stop. Never, never stop. You had a lot of energy. You had a lot of energy. You went from basketball to football. I thought he was doing, I, I didn't understand how you end up in box, to be honest with you. But he started with basketball and then he was really hard in football. And since he was really like, he liked, he used to like to fight a lot when we were young. We used to fight a lot, you know. So um, I would expect him to stay in, in football. And we have cousins doing football, so. But no, he, he straight went to boxing. Patrice is uh, one of my professional athletes who's ranked to be top 10 in the world. I've known Patrice for a long time. Uh, we started working together. I think he had three pro fights somewhere around there. I called Eric and said, I need somebody to train me. And he said, because I got a fight uh, in two weeks. I need the coach. So he said, let's try this. He's got his very own style going for him. And he kind of, I don't want to say he wings it. He doesn't follow a game plan. He follows a game plan. but. He will go with a little bit of emotion and theatrics. So I think the biggest takeaway from that is you got to work with someone like Tyson Fury or Patrice who are not orthodox and not fight with them to make them orthodox, but really just uh, excel at what it is they are, which is being very unique and try to adapt to them to a certain degree. I was searching for a promoter in the Montreal. They, nobody like really approached me in Montreal. Reason? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. And uh, the show of uh, Yvon Michel. 
So they said, Pat, if you win, every came to see me, Pat, if you win, I think you, I got a promoter, he's interest, interesting in you, so he probably want to sign you if you win the fight. And I said, okay, let's make the fight happen. Uh, and I gave all I have in this fight. I fought and I win the fight. Then uh, we came to Toronto. I talked to Lee, we met. I came to a couple of his show and uh, it gave me a chance to fight on his uh, court uh, at the Denfort. And I think it was for the 24th or something like this. It was a, a big show and uh, I proved myself. I think I knocked him out in the first round and uh, boom, contract. Patrice is a special fighter. Um, I think that the future is very high. He can go very, very far in the sport. When it comes back to when we first met, I, I met him at a casino show in Quebec and I saw him fight and I just, it just didn't make sense why this kid wasn't signed to someone. And immediately I jumped all over him and I was like, no, 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 we can, we can go far. He is uh, very dramatic. He is um, animated. He has uh, a unique personality that I think is very likable. Patrice is a, a very unique individual. Um, most fighters like isolation. Patrice does not like isolation. Uh, he likes to talk to people. He likes to smile, whether it be strangers or people he knows. Uh, he doesn't really care. He's comfortable around people. He is a nice guy. He's a good guy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, he has his limit, like everybody, you know, and I know exactly where to push them, but it's not everybody who knows. Like, he's pretty patient, you know, he's pretty humble. So, yeah, it is a nice guy. I would, have to, I would like to say something bad about him, but I don't have much to say. You know? The people that know him, they're like, oh my God, is that your brother? Like, you know, and stuff like that. Other people, you might have to take it in because, like, they're probably not following box, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't really understand how probably, like, how like how far he probably is in it but when they come and see the match you see instagram and see what he has going on they're like okay they, like they got a reality check okay mm -hmm. he's really out there you know so like yeah they they want to support him i mean it's different you know it's like okay he's a little superstar you know but i like that like i would like to see more people come to him like i can't even reach him i like i would like to see that his style you, you can't not watch him um, he's willing to take risks He's a big entertainer. Um, I think he has all, all the things that can make him a star. Um, it's just getting him in front of the right people and people seeing him. And I think it'll organically grow. I was pretty creative with how I was moving him. And then next thing you know, we were moving him so fast. That I was like, oh my gosh, this, this guy's really only fought a couple years. And he's in the top 10 by the WBO. I think he's number 11 by the IBF, number 12 by the WBA. I was like, he's only got 14 fights. Like, um, I'm getting calls saying like he could be a replacement for a Golovkin fight. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like, we gotta build a star still. I got my restaurant Sugo to go first. <laughs> Sugo restaurant to go first. <laughs> Lee's doing something really great. Um, I'm from Montreal. I live in Montreal. And uh, Lee gave me the chance to be in the ring. He put me in the show and everything. So that was a big, 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 big moment, a big opportunity for me. And uh, it gave me 100% the chance to prove myself. I did for myself. And uh, to be a Canadian boxer from Montreal and to fight in Toronto and to perform in Toronto, and to see everybody like support you and everything, that's a really good thing and I really appreciate that. The biggest hurdle right now is creating the platforms, getting Canadian 
um, media coverage and a Canadian network to say, you know what, I believe in what you're doing, let's get it in front of people. Because I truly believe that once you get these fighters in front of fans, they're gonna fall in love with them. It's just getting them in front of the fans. That's one of the main reasons why I am going across the nation to do shows in different territories, let it be Vancouver, Halifax, Winnipeg, any of these different territories. So um, when that fighter crosses the border and does fight at the MGM Grand or the T-Mobile Center in Las Vegas, it's not, oh yeah, that guy from Toronto or that guy from Oshawa. Or, no, it's that guy from Canada and all of Canada is tuning in. I don't know how many boxers is in the US, but I do know that they, they have a lot, a lot of boxer, a lot of good boxer. And Canada is kind of like under the radar, I think so. Not too much, not like before, but still we're not like, they're not gonna say like, oh, the Canadian boxer, they're all good, or all and this and all and that. It's a extra pressure for us Canadian boxer to prove themselves it's a little bit harder because they don't really come to Montreal, Canada to say, oh yeah, we got a lot of boxers, so let's pick this boxer, this boxer, and mix. Because they do have a lot of boxers in the US. But uh, if you're able to live there, bring Canada to the map. My motivation is to, I can't say be better. Better, but not for people, more for me and to push the limit, push the limit. Because I know I'm able to push more and more every time. And I can see it in the fight and I can see it in training that, oh yeah, I'm better than I used to be. Oh, that fight is way better. So I got to improve and improve and improve and show what I'm able to do in the ring, not only for me, for my team, and to help my team, push my team to the top. Because uh, I think I'm able to give them uh, something different, something different. The key with him is progression. So like, it's not necessarily the end result, but it's the progression along the way. When that world title comes along, the title of the winner, that's how we're really gonna build a start. So when you go back to asking me what pace or, or, or time length do I look at it, um, every fight that he has right now has to mean something. There has to be some sort of gain, there has to be some sort of um, investment into getting him closer to that stage. Um, and I do think that where he's at right now, he's already fighting international talent guys, guys that are close to being in the world rankings uh, or guys that were in the world rankings. So I think it's just um, a consistency of fighting, consistency of improvement. And maybe this time next year, we might be sitting in the same seat saying, hey, um, you're right on track. 12 months later, he's fighting for an, uh, an eliminator. To be the best, you have to fight uh, every best in Canada, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to clear all, all Canada. If you give me, if they give me the chance, I take it. If they don't, next we pass to the next one. Next after next and after next, and uh, we see when I be when somebody will stop me. Mm. I'm not planning to be stopped. Not today. Not tomorrow. <laughs> never. Actually, never. <laughs> If they call you, you have to say yes. You know, you have to say yes. They don't. They won't call you a hundred times or six times. You have one call. Take it. Take it. Do your best. And that's what we don't want to do. We don't want to go too fast. So when we go, we get the call. We be ready. We have to be ready because I'm not going in the ring to lose. I, I got to be ready, hundred percent ready, to uh, show up and show people what we've been working on all those years. At the second of our MVPs, that is to be the ring from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Patrice Vicious Valde. In the, in the locker room, everything's good. I'm not like in the mood still, 
So, but the more we go, the more we go, the closer we get to the fight, the more I get in my head, start talking to myself, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'm in my zone. Once I'm in the zone, it's over. It's over. I, I'm not gonna switch or change my mood. I'm in my zone, I'm in my head. And uh, that's when the transformation has to have the nice guy to vicious. <laughs> Yeah, he's been like that pretty much, uh, <laughs> pretty much since I've known him. Um, he's very, very laid back. He's, it's, it's, you never know he's about to fight, even on fight day most times, until right about you know the warm up starts. And I'd say about a fight or two before he enters the ring, you see that switch go off. You see it in his eyes. You see it in his body language. The headphones go in, and he gets a little quiet. Um, and the seriousness sort of picks up. And then when he gets in the ring, if you've seen him fight, you know he's got that that switches on, and he's all business. For sure, because he does all that stuff and then goes out and knocks some guy out, like on call. You probably have something that make it click, you know what I'm saying? A state of mind that bring him there, like I probably don't even know it. But yeah, you can't switch to, to like joke to serious pretty fast, you know what I'm saying? You know, want to be funny and want to, to keep it serious. I guess probably get to the state of mind, like he likes, he likes it. He, he likes to nag. He's like, he like this. This is what you see on the ring. You do all of this stuff. You know, he like that. You know, it makes him happy. So, I guess you get to that state of mind, like, okay, like, uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, two undefeated boxers, somebody's home has come to go. I still want to have my brother back at the end of all of this, you know. So that's really what I care about. Like I tell him, like you know, sometimes I talk to him, like how long you think be doing this, like you know. But he has, like, he's pretty conscious of that. Like, like you get hit on the head on a regular basis, so it can eventually be a problem. Worst case is to get too many concussion and was not be able to fight anymore, and uh, never had one. Might be in the future. <laughs> we never know. It's boxing. It's a fighting sport. So, but uh, I'm well prepared. I got everything. Um, school. So if I gotta stop boxing one day, uh, I guess, and I have no choice, I will stop boxing and uh, still be in the, around boxing and everything. But. Um, I think I'm 100% prepared for everything can happen. When I'm in the ring, I don't think about nothing except destroy, destroy, destroy. That's all I think about is destroy him. That's it.
I want to box and be the best. May the best win, you know. I'm not afraid to lose. I'm not afraid, never been afraid to lose. So I take the challenge that time. Keep winning. Keep winning, keep winning, keep put nasty fight, nasty knockout. And I'm not afraid to fight. I love fighting, so why not?